Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Rosemary Higgins. I'm the director at the American Center. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for our Women in Labor event. We're so thrilled to be hosting you. While I have you captive, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the American Center. We are the cultural center for the US Embassy in New Delhi. We host a series of events um, every week, every month, and we have lots of fun things for you to um, come check us out on our Facebook page. Each week we share um, either in person or uh, during these times online, concerts, policy events, um, uh, all kinds of film screenings and discussions. We hope that you'll join us there. Tonight, we're particularly excited to share with you our Women in Labor series. This is a really important uh, event for us. We are partnering with Women in Labor along with our friends at Wild City to share with you a great conversation tonight on women in sports. So I'd like to pass it over to my, my dear friend and colleague, Christina McGillivray, uh, who heads up uh, Women in Labor and herself is an accomplished filmmaker. And she'll tell you a little bit more about the series and about tonight's event. So over to you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rose. We are so excited about this event and glad to have you join us, everybody that is here joining us online. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Women in Labor, which was a podcast inspired by the fact that uh, what we've seen is women dropping out of the workforce in India at a, at a pretty alarming rate. Uh, now, I first learned about this. I've lived in India for around 10 years. I'm going on my 11th year. Uh, and I am a big nerd. I'm a big dork. I read all the time. And I hadn't heard about this phenomenon until maybe about uh, the summer of 2018 when I read about it. And then I started to ask around. I asked other journalists. I asked friends uh, at coffee shops and anyone I saw. And what I heard is everyone was like, no, 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 that's not going on. That can't be true. And I thought, well, but the data says something otherwise. And so in that gray area between what the data was showing us and what we all believed anecdotally in our lives, because we're seeing more women working, in that gray area, there was something really interesting to discuss. Uh, and that's why we decided to create a podcast series that explores all of the many themes of, and topics around what's going on with women and work in the country. And whether that's power dynamics, whether that's um, what's going on in, in family, in workplace dynamics, in our public spaces, um, each episode examines a different aspect of what's going on with women in work. Uh, and and uh, because the topic is a bit heavy, we decided to partner with comedian Aditi Mittal. She's my co-host on the, on the series. Uh, and so it's also quite fun. Uh, so we would love if you would join us. Uh, we're producing it in partnership with our colleagues at the American Center, which we're thrilled about. Episodes come out every Tuesdays and Saturdays. It's a limited edition series. Uh, so please join in. You can find more information at womeninlabor.com. And today we are very excited for our discussion. Uh, we're thrilled to be joined by such wonderful, wonderful women, with each with their own interesting stories. Uh, and I'm so glad to be able to introduce our moderator, Rika Roy, who is a writer, a broadcaster, also to be a podcaster soon, from what I understand. You'll know her from the NDTV show Turning turning point. Uh, and one thing that we're really excited about with Rika is that she also works to make sure that sports are gender accessible. And that also that, that you don't have to necessarily come to sports with a huge sports background to be able to access them and enjoy them. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Rika. Thank you so much for, for being with us this evening. Thank you very much, Christina. And um, I will have to do a warm welcome to three of our lovely ladies who join me on the panel this evening. Uh, first up, let me introduce to you Anjum Chopra, uh, who has been the captain of the Indian women's uh, cricket team. Cricket, as you will hear from Anjum, was a game that was originally started by the women in 1795. And then the men at some point started playing it and they made it hugely popular. But what makes Anjum tick and what has made her what she's become today, we'll hear from her. Also joining me on the show will be Jyoti uh, Bharat, uh, uh, an acclaimed footballer who in fact gave up a corporate job to kick the ball and uh, you know, to uh, spread the message of hope and also 
the beautiful game. Uh, my third guest uh, is rather an unconventional because uh, we don't hear about too many women racers, uh, race car drivers in India. And she is one, Rinalini Singh. And uh, she won the round one of the 22nd JK Tire Championship. She is an acclaimed racer. She's a part of the Ahura team. In case you don't know about it, she'll tell us all about her team in a little while. Um, thank you, ladies. Thank you very much for joining me um, in this discussion at this event uh, this evening. Anjum, um, let me throw this open first to you. When did sports really happen to you? At what time, at what point in your life did you think that sports would be your life, sports would be your um, everything? I think uh, it was very easy, Rika, especially because uh, you know how difficult studies are. So uh, when I had the option of uh, cho choosing between studies and sport, and uh, since, of course, my family, I do have a... a sports background uh, in my family and since uh, my teachers offered me to uh, be a good uh, sports person or to be a good student it was easy to go towards the sports field so I thought it's easier than studying uh, math science biology chemistry maths it was so difficult so it was easy to count the number of runs <laughs> that you needed to score and make sure you get them well, uh, Jyoti, um, you know, I started following you around 2013 uh, when you were a part, you became a part of the team. And, uh, you know, when I first saw a picture of you, rather a story that was done by NDTV that reminded me of the film Bend It Like Beckham. Uh, were you ever compared? Were you ever, uh, did any of your neighboring aunties compare you to that character of Kira Knightley? Um, yes, I think I was compared to that. Uh, I got a lot of from why are you wasting so much time playing football? Uh, your board exams are around the corner. I got a lot of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, as Anjum said, I think uh, people who enjoy sport know very early on uh, that this is what I want to be doing. And uh, yeah, to have with what other people may think that this is what I enjoy doing. And why football, really? Because, you know, the other conventional sports that we normally see women in, in this country play are probably basketball, tennis, badminton. We don't see too many, too many women taking to football, even though the women's football uh, team, Indian women's football team is ranked higher than the Indian men's football team. Uh, yeah, I think for me, uh, football was very easy to play. I used to play hockey when I was smaller, I was younger. I used to play cricket also sometimes. But I think for me, football was so easy because all you needed was a ball. And mm -hmm. literally, you can play bare, barefoot if you wanted to. You didn't need a court. You just needed some space. Uh, you can make goals with a couple of shoes. And it was just so easy and accessible to play that for me, that was the thing that attracted me to, you know, taking this one up uh, seriously. Mm -hmm. Right. Renalini, at what age did you lay your hands on the steering? And how did... A race car happened to you. Uh, so 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 it's it's a mix of story as in the normal life and this racing life. So um, I have always been very passionate about cars, and uh, so my dad was so, and he he inspired me, and my mother always boosted me for all of these things. So uh, having said that, I learned driving at a very early age, and uh, everybody praised my uh, driving while I steered through the narrow lanes of Patna or Broad Highway. So uh, gradually that became my passion. And, I and what age were you? And what age did you start driving really? Did you have a driving license at that time? <laughs> to be honest, no, no I didn't have a driving <laughs> license. No. <laughs> I did start it pretty early. I was 14 then. So, um, ah, interesting. Yeah, so I, I learned driving then, but I uh, went on officially on roads uh, after I got my license, but I did mm -hmm. learn it really, uh, really very early. Mm -hmm. uh, Anjum, uh, Jyoti said that football happened to her late and Rinalini said she started learning uh, 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 driving early and, and, and that graduated to being, a, and she graduated to being a race car driver. When did cricket really happen to you? Were you, were you very young? And were you going to the cricket field because there were others in the family or around in the locality who were taking you there? Uh, I played my first match at the age of nine. So mm -hmm. probably about uh, 
four or five months prior to that, I had uh, started my uh, cricket training officially. And it, that, that happened when I was just about nine years old. And one of the summer breaks, um, you know, my mom took me and my brother to uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Delhi, where they were conducting trials for the under-15 under uh, women's team for Delhi. And uh, they, they selected me. They said, yeah, your formal training can begin straight away. And uh, one fine day, I just got a call to come and play a friendly game uh, between two inter-college teams, uh, between Kamla Nehru and uh, Maitri College. They were playing some match and I was invited to playing there. I didn't even have a proper kit. I, I was in my school uniform. Uh, we usually have a white dress uh, as a school uniform, uh, largely in most of the schools in the country um, during the summers. Now, since most schools have come up, so there is, there's a combination of colors. So I, I went in my school uniform to play my first game and uh, my journey started from there on. So when you started uh, playing the game and when you were talking about having played the first game, were there enough girls to make up two teams? Of yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Riga. You said it uh, very correctly that the game started much earlier. In fact, uh, women started playing cricket much before the men started playing cricket. But of course, we've seen that the men's cricket has taken the game to a completely newer level now, which mm -hmm. is brilliant. But uh, yes, uh, there were uh, women. In fact, uh, you know, women's cricket was not publicized at all. It wasn't a popular sport. It wasn't a sport which many people associated with saying that, oh, women do play cricket. Uh, so it, it was still raising a lot of eyebrows. But yes, um, all the women's colleges, at least in Delhi, I'm aware of, all of them had teams. So there were easily about 12 to 15 teams, at least in Delhi. And a few schools were also training a few girls. And, and what was the mix like? Was it, were these kids from elite backgrounds? Were these, uh, mix, were these kids from a mix of background who really envisaged cricket as their career? I think career, largely, Rika was uh, dependent more about uh, getting admission into college. So a lot of players ah. playing cricket just went out of, just when they were finishing their 10th or 11th, because we have, in India, we have school till 12, so, uh, till, till the 12th grade. So, um, they did start playing cricket just before that or they start playing cricket just when they get into college by giving mm -hmm. trials and getting admission because yes, the competition wasn't there so much. So a lot of these girls had started playing cricket just when they were entering college. So they were somewhere around 17 or 18. Um, so that, that's been the, actually the style. And, and in terms of being the, how the, the background of the players, I think it was always a mixed background. Uh, quote unquote, if you say that the elitist elite of Delhi used to come and play cricket, no, that no. wasn't the scene. But uh, it's not that uh, what we say that from, uh, from diverse backgrounds, it wasn't diverse because we were all in Delhi. Um, so we had a very pretty much a, even a Stephen kind of a background. But yes, there, there were differences. It wasn't that everybody did go to a public school. It wasn't that everybody went to a government school. So it was a little mm. kind of a mixed bag. It was morely, mostly the middle class, the great Indian middle class Correct. that was uh, yeah. taking to cricket at that time and also putting their kids into cricket. Interesting point you raised about college admissions. Let me go over to Jyoti. Jyoti, was that a scene when it came to football also that people, more and more people, well, women uh, played football because they wanted to go to good colleges in India and abroad? Um, because you went to Exeter. Yeah. So when I joined college, uh, I think uh, I would say a handful of colleges had football teams for women. So I would say about maximum four or five. So this is back in 2007. And I didn't have an option of even, you know, trying to get into college through football. Um, I do remember trying to get into college through, say, athletics or something else. But um, football wasn't really uh, an option for me. Even in St. Stephen's, we didn't have a football team. Um, what about hockey? Well, you played hockey, you said. Yeah, we didn't have a hockey team in St. Stephen's either, a women's hockey okay. team. So honestly, I think my undergrad years were a bit uh, frustrating for me because I was in a college where really the only sports that we had for girls was basketball. We had, um, we had lawn tennis, uh, badminton, uh, you know, the usual uh, women's sports. And, and apart from that, I was stuck for three years not knowing, you know, what to do. Um, luckily, in my third year, I realized I can go for open trials for inter-university. No one told me that. So in my third year, I actually played my first football game uh, ever uh, in my life uh, when I went to an open tryout for inter-university. Right. And Rinalini, what about you? Were you a lone racer for a very long time till you found a team? Yes, yes, definitely. So 
I have, uh, I, I tried going for rallies many times, but I couldn't go because I couldn't find someone uh, who can navigate me. Because when you go for a rally where only women, it's a woman rally, you uh, definitely need a navigator who's a woman. So uh, that's, that, that has always been a problem. And uh, you can't just get a, a navigator who, who, who just knows to drive. There's a little more extra skill that you need who can help you while driving when, uh, when you're actually rallying. Uh, mm -hmm. Coming to this team, yes, it, it was in 2017, uh, towards the end of 2017, I, find out, I found out about this uh, team. And that's where the actual racing started, circuit racing started. So, so you really began circuit racing in 2017 after you found out about the team, is that correct? Yeah, correct. So there was a talent hunt uh, organized by JK Tayo and Ahura. So in the talent hunt, they were they were looking for six drivers to go for the championship, and mm -hmm. uh, I got I, I somehow managed to get into that team. I got selected in top six, and then uh, I participated in the championship from then. Yeah, right. Um, Rinaldi, I have to ask you this question at this point. Now, Anjum and Jyoti both played team sports. You are one person who are right now a part of the team, uh, Ahura team, but then. Um, rallying is, is, is a very lonely sport. As a woman, how did you navigate that lonely space? Absolutely. It, it's, uh, so there are different perspectives to it. Again, I'll add to the, your question. So this sport, um, uh, again, there is no separate category for women or uh, men. And uh, there, are, there are different nuances to it. Just, just like Jyoti said that you just need a football and go and play. Uh, but there are many other things here. I can't just take my car out and go and practice. Uh, I need a track. I need a car. And there are many, uh, many other mandatory things that need to be there. And it's an expensive sport as well. And that's where yes, perhaps the loneliness right. strikes and you have to go and gather sponsors and other support. The support system has to be greater. Yeah, yeah. It's not just your performance. There are many, many other things that you need to, you know, get in, together in place before you even think of racing. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a lot many things that you have to, uh, you know, get in place before you're going to a championship. Well, you need a lot of funds. You need a lot of other support. You need to be mentally fit. You need to be physically fit. So it, it demands a lot. Yeah. What kind of funds would you require to go into to get into a championship? So I need a car, I need mechanics, I need running cost, mm -hmm. I need the track charges. Uh, uh, at that, uh, so practice is, apart from that, I need also need uh, uh, some money for practice, which again, I'll have to go to, a, go to some team who, who's actually running these practice sessions. So I have to pay for the car, I have to pay for the track, and then the running cost to that team. So, uh, so even if I go for Formula 4, uh, there, there is a... a so there is a cost associated with it. If I say if a, tra a track day, I would need somewhere around three to four hours of track time. And I will probably have to pay somewhere around 30 to 40,000 a day. Mm. And, and are there sponsors who are backing you in that uh, initiative to kind of raise 30 to 40,000 rupees on a given track day? So till the, till 2000, uh, uh, 18th, I was being sponsored by Jackie Tires, uh, but now I am not. I'm I'm working on the sponsors, and I also want to go to the different categories of racing. So this was I, I was only talking about Formula Four, which was being sponsored by Jackie Tire. But now, uh, recently this year in January, there was a talent hunt for Volkswagen drivers, which is Volkswagen Polo 2020 Cup, and I got selected in top 20, and I'm only I'm the only female in that. Uh, so. Again, I have to uh, get sponsors even to get, uh, to, even to take part, part, even to participate in that uh, championship, mm -hmm. even if I just got selected that. That's not just it. I need sponsors even now. I'll come back to you on the sponsorship yeah. bit, but let me go over to Anjum. Anjum, when you started playing to now, would you say that um, even in women's cricket, things have changed, sponsors have come in because the sport itself has become much more attractive? Well, yes, uh, we can't deny that. Since 2017 uh, ICC World Cup in England where the Indian team finished runners up, I think uh, that's just changed the complete complexion of uh, the women's uh, cricket, uh, not only in India, but world over as well. 
the reason world over because uh, india obviously has a huge cricket loving population and otherwise also we have a good population uh, we can match any country and uh, probably win hands down but apart from that i think the very fact that uh, india as a nation um you know proved that they are good enough uh, to be at the lords final and then fortunately there was no men's cricket happening at that point of time it it gathered a lot of attention and that's basically been the reason the game changer from 2017 till today 2020 and because a lot of people are watching women's cricket they are much more aware i'm not surprised there is a much more uh, attention given by the sponsors uh, by the media by people in general by the audience uh, and a few names have become uh, household names as well so everything has changed now and that's why you see a lot of uh, familiarity to the women's sport if a young girl of today were to join cricket would have ambitions of playing uh, cricket for india mm. what are the top 3 uh, pro and con suggestions you will give her top 3 things that you will say this is the reason you need to go for and top three things that you shouldn't come into this profession see uh, there is only one thing uh, which i'll always say to any player you want to play a sport be it hockey football car racing cricket or any i think if you want to play a sport play a sport i have never told anyone to like give do this and do that uh, probably this is the way it's going to be i think as a as a sports person which i consider myself even today to be it's important to know whether you like the sport or not if you like the sport and you want to play the game that's it there is there is no con and there is no pro to it it's something that you like to do and you will always find time to do it whether or not my school or college allowed me to miss my exams i did miss my exam whether or not my coaches allowed me to miss my uh, my match for an exam i still did that because i had to do that there was no other option so i think it's just your passion which drives you to play the sport and that's it it doesn't matter which sport so i never say don't do this and do this and you'll achieve success it doesn't happen it will never happen any cricketer taking to cricket and saying they will become the next uh, mithali raj or aswati mandana it will never happen you need to find your own identity everyone is you unique to i think more about unique it's i think it, the, the sport takes a lot out of you and it gives you back even more but before it starts giving you back it takes a lot out of you and demands a lot of uh, dedication and motivation towards playing the game it doesn't happen overnight that you earn an india cap it doesn't open happen overnight that you earn a sponsorship you have to keep at it so there's a lot of dedication that a sports person needs to show towards the game before the game starts giving you back and that can only happen if you are dedicated enough to allow those many hours to be given to that game so for me rika i always say if you have the passion to play the sport please go out and play the sport don't think what will i get in the end if you don't get millions doesn't matter you'll get the discipline that is needed in life and how does it help you and how does it help an individual to navigate better in life because uh, you know sports is a mini pitch for life so how does it when you play sports how does it help you better to become how does it help you or how does it give you a direction in life i think every delivery forget the over every ball that you play we have got six balls to complete an over in cricket um every ball you play gives you a story in life for example i'll just give you a brief example it'll take might take a little longer if i have to play a short pitch ball and i learned it this i learned this somewhere when i was almost 12 or 13 years old how to play a short pitch ball indians were never good at playing the ball which is targeted towards their head because they were not good pullers or hookers of the ball that's a, that's a play a cricket shot uh, that i uh, described so if the ball is targeted towards your head you try to leave at it great that's because you're not ready to pull or hook the shot you might get out you might lose your wicket similarly in life if you have a trouble coming towards you either you weave out of that line of the trouble or you you're ready to combat it with all force and rigor similarly in cricket if you're ready to play that short pitch ball and hit it for a six you won the battle against the bowler so everything that we do in cricket and fortunately a lot of people say cricket takes a lot of time yes it does but in that entire day it teaches you everything from patience to dedication to fighting spirit to losing a battle to winning a battle till the last ball is bowled and and that's what it says uh, motivation's first line is don't give up till it's over 
Don't give up till it's over. Well, that's a great line. Uh, Jyoti, let me take this conversation to you. How rewarding is it to be a professional footballer in India today? I think, uh, you know, rewards are first and foremost on a very personal level uh, because, you know, you're putting in that hard work and, and besides all the, you know, you may get some media recognition or you may, you know, get your name written in some history books, but the main thing is for you, it's, it's a personal sort of feeling, especially because it's something that you've put so much time and effort into. So then you actually play for the country. It's just um, more than anything else. It's just that feeling of satisfaction that all those, you know, all that work you put in, all, it, it got you somewhere and you are playing on a huge stage and you're playing for your country. And, and you know, as Anjum said, in a country of uh, <laughs> billions, to make an, your national team is a huge deal. And it does, you know, make you feel very proud of yourself. And you feel like all that hard work was, you know, put to, put to good use. Uh, right. You know, since we are doing this discussion as a part of Women in Labour series and to perhaps encourage more and more women to play sports, join the labour pool and, you know, make sports their profession. I really want to ask you this because, you know, we live in a society where we are constantly judged. Women particularly are constantly judged by the way we look, by the way we behave, by the way we carry ourselves. And, you know, even when I was growing up, I was playing sports. And because I have short hair, many people told me that, you know, if you don't uh, have longer hair or if you kind of don't behave in a certain way, you're not good enough to get married. You're not good enough to, you know, be a woman that is expected you to be. What do you think about that? Do, do you think that a woman's womanhood is taken away when she plays or wo I mean, she is not womanly enough when she plays sport? Um, not at all. I think, I think, uh, I think the biggest strength of being a woman is that uh, we guys are so resilient. Number one, I think women are the most resilient. Uh, and number two, I think we uh, women have great decision-making ability. Um, and I think both of those are so prevalent in sport. Uh, you have to be, res res uh, you know, it's something that it's resilient. Always, yeah. You're always fighting that when you're playing uh, sport in, in, in India, being a woman, because Literally, there's a lot of stuff going against you. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of people saying stuff, uh, you know, you're wasting your time, you're getting old now, get married, uh, all that stuff. But yeah. you really have to just stick to it. And I think that's a huge part of being a woman, you know, just doing what you want to do and not listening, you know, cutting those voices out. And secondly, just, you know, making decisions, uh, whether it's any sport, whether it's on your know, racing, whether you're playing cricket, uh, whether you're playing football, it's, it's quick decision making. Uh, and it's being able to pick something and then sticking to it. And that's, I think, so important for being a woman um, mm -hmm. in life in general. Because you have to make decisions for not yourself, your family, if you have kids. Uh, it's so important. Right. Mridalini, um, well, women, as we know, are great multitaskers. Do you think that skill of multitasking makes one a good racer? And also, you know, someone yeah, who yeah. Is, an, is an individual sport... Do you think, uh, you know, that skill of multitasking is very, is, is key? Yeah, definitely. Um, um, be it any sport, you, so if it, it makes, so the first thing when you talk about sport is, sport does make you um, uh, fit. It makes you agile. And uh, uh, everybody rightly mentioned is in uh, the sport develops a killer instinct in you. In you. And uh, you, you become a better team player, you, <laughs> You prepare for your competition. You manage conflicts in a in a better way. Uh, so you become a uh, you you also become a team manager. You become a people manager. So I can see these skills uh, definitely getting imbibed in me. Um, and and I also see. So I I am an IT professional as well. I this racing is not become still my full time profession. So I, I am also working. So I feel at many, many times that uh, it has helped me a lot in my professional life. And uh, uh, I definitely, I do not think anywhere lesser than my male counterparts in my office. And they, they also respect me and values my personality, however I am. And, and uh, people yeah. respect, so, so respect Renality, and respect me. Yeah. So Renality, sports for you is passion. It's not a profession. You have another profession to support your passion. I need.
to have one that's what i think as of now until it becomes until i reach to some level that i i think that i can you know support myself and my sport both together uh, uh, be, having racing as my full time profession so what what advice would as, you really yeah. give to the to the young racers to the racers of tomorrow uh, in terms of you know how to navigate in this very very difficult space so uh, I, i would say as anjum already said as in if, if you want to play a sport you just go and play it and and uh, and and you get to know how do you you know every person is every individual is different you know you find out your way uh doing what you excel more uh, what works better for you uh but whoever uh, the ladies among the audience shall introspect and 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 you know resolve how they can make themselves regular and and i mean as in regular in fitness activities or if they want to play any sport so uh, so they can they can form a group or they can find colleagues they can they can just go and train together they have to start somewhere you should you should just start and uh, i feel that you make your own way if you really want to do it right now i'll ask a question that you know is often asked to me as to what has been your greatest moment of doubt and have how have you dealt with it to become what you have become anju would you like to take that question first yeah it happened to me when i was uh, studying when i was completing my mba and uh, i had all my friends uh, getting employed uh, somewhere or the other or looking for employment um at that point of time uh, it, it was uh, just about uh, time and women's cricket was making its presence felt we had just done with the uh, women's world cup in india a couple of years after that people knew about the sport but they didn't know much about it and for me it was a decision which i had to take uh, or at least i felt that i was at a uh, position where i had to take the decision whether i continue playing the sport give more hours or or go back to uh, probably looking for a corporate job and uh, get into uh, that kind of a zone where everybody else all my friends are working so uh, i wasn't too busy playing cricket but uh, yes i was busy practicing because you have to uh, always be ready for a contest so that was a difficult phase i almost gave up the sport uh, thinking that no it's not going to have a future i will not be able to uh, run a life with just playing cricket it's not a paying sport it's not a sport which is going to be uh, paying my bills right through so it was time i had al- almost decided that this is probably going to be my last year and i'm going to look for a corporate job also it wasn't a big uh, plus if you were a cricketer to getting a corporate job it wasn't mm-hmm. a, a positive because everybody else thought uh, all the employees uh, employers thought that you will be away playing the game more often than you'll be there in the office uh, working because of your background i had already played for india by the time i, I finished my mba so It, they, they, it just didn't inspire that kind of confidence uh, to the employers mm-hmm. so rather than working on a positive it was it wasn't that great for me to uh, getting a job and you can't say you were not busy because 100 odis and 12 test matches many many more matches and captaining india it captaining india may not have been like a light job it must have been very very difficult even then yeah absolutely absolutely it was and shortly after that I, and did your that, management that, that, education help you in that yeah yeah i was just finishing my mba at that point and in fact uh, me and jyoti shared uh, something more apart from being uh, keen uh, women sports people is also that we went to the same college st stevens college so uh, good for that i just uh, became more aware about that for jyoti and uh, stevens really helped uh, you know it always does your your alma mater always helps especially because they have such a nice uh, alumni and and you can always turn around towards people in the room and say okay because everybody is largely an accomplished person um mb also did help because that just te- tells you how to handle pressure you know the first thing that i learned in mba was uh, jit that is just in time and that was one aspect in uh, in the in, in the subjects that we used to uh, read organizational behavior how to make sure that you are just in time and also how to delegate please don't try doing everything out yourself make sure that you delegate the job and get the results so everything did help and that year when i just finished my mba and i was looking for a job and um, just about to become the vice captain of the indian team that was a very tough phase because mm-hmm. it was one step left or a one step right but it was going to be a life changing decision i'm glad i didn't reach that level where i had to jump off the cliff because the decision was already made i was just on that cliff 
when uh, mm-hmm. the doors opened for uh, better opportunities and i got a, i managed a job which allowed me to play cricket and the day i became the vice captain they were very happy jyoti what about you um, what was that moment of doubt when you thought you would give up sport or maybe that moment that really shaped you to become who you are today um okay so i have to say um i started playing football at 19 and i very quickly escalated i mean my career sort of escalated and i played for india you know within two years of that and honestly i was you know at the top of my game i was playing well i was feeling happy um and then suddenly about two years later i had a drop so i suddenly was you know left out of say the indian camp uh maybe it was a drop of you know form or maybe i was just not being able to perform in you know camp settings and suddenly i had this sort of uh feeling that do i want to carry on uh playing sport if i'm not making the indian team i think that was a huge sort of uh decision point for me where i had to decide whether it was about being you know on top or whether it was about just playing the sport Mm-hmm. and i think uh, for months i actually didn't want to play i was so put off i was just so disheartened it what had happened that i didn't mm-hmm. want to look at a uh, football till i think i decided that you know i'm going to still play um maybe you know at a, a you know lower level maybe play for my state play for a club mm-hmm. but i'm still going to keep playing and i think uh, that brought me a lot of joy because i didn't give the sport up i may not be playing at the top level anymore but i'm still playing um and that was very important for me to, to stay in touch with something that i i love so much okay. um so you know it's i'm i have to say a lot of people will not make it to the top or will you know mm-hmm. fall short or that that happens along the way not everybody not everybody journey is is the same or reaches the same places but i think the important thing is to decide whether playing sport is your ultimate thing playing is the ultimate thing it isn't you know reaching a level playing in itself is the end playing the journey your passion yeah the journey more than the destination sport. of course yeah uh, and at what time did you think of uh, you know launching the football players welfare association was it was it a conscious decision to give back to the system that gave you so much yes most definitely i think uh, looking back uh, when i was in college i kept looking for groups of women who were playing sport playing football together and i saw so so and i wasn't being able to find anything a lot of schools play but i feel after school maybe may after college for sure a lot of people stop playing sport because then there's no formal training there's no formal setting for them to play in so then they just give up and i realized there's a huge void uh, for women professional women who may just want to play for fun um uh, and you know there's mm-hmm. no space for them to carry on something that they may enjoy doing in a completely recreational setting and that's why i started this um for women no matter what age group you belong to no matter what you know level of football or uh, of football you play to just start to come together and play just for the love of the sport which is the most important thing for me basically they can get to you or your space if they love kicking the ball yeah they just want to have a fun kick around which is ultimately the best thing i feel as the most fun it sounds like a great camaraderie as well well um rinalini um i want to ask you picking from this point of you know having a great camaraderie having a support group of other girls or girlfriends to be able to play with what about you do you have a support group of peers yeah yeah definitely in in fact uh, i have always mentioned wherever i get to talk uh, um, so uh, uh, i right now i'm working with wipro and uh, previous to this i was working with oracle and uh, both the companies i would because that's when i started racing so uh, i would say whenever and uh, whenever uh, i needed this support of going on the track and even if there are projects running which i have to take care of um, not that i'm not aware of when my races are or practices but everybody has given me extended the whole hearted support that 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 they have uh, looked after my work when i am not there and 
they have enabled me to work from home in in every situation so that i can i my work doesn't you know i i want to give priority to everything right now because it's not that my sport is my full time career in fact to support my sport i need to uh, be very active professionally uh, because that is supporting me financially so i i can't mm. even ignore that and i have been getting that support i am really glad that i've been getting my support from my peers my colleagues even all of my uh, leadership as well of company i'm very glad for that yeah Well, I'll have to ask you this. Now, I, your CV mentioned that mentions that you're from Bihar. Now, I haven't really heard of another, you know, sports person coming uh, from Bihar who's performed at your level A. And secondly, a race car driver from the state of Bihar, and particularly someone who's grown up in Patna. Um, you know, what kind of support did you really get? Because with Jyoti and Anju, both of them. have been in delhi played their sport in delhi which has a larger sporting infrastructure and also societal support i believe but what about you um i give my whole credit i give all the credit to my parents um um, um i i am the youngest daughter uh, um, in my family and in fact we have four uh, uh, sisters and uh, i was ragged pampered and adored by all my sisters all together and i was the youngest so you know how it goes with the youngest one uh, to be frank uh, my uh, community other than my parents never knew uh, Uh, that i was participating or training for the sport uh, they came to know later on through newspapers and social media and uh, and generally as in uh, everyone was uh, happy with whatever um small or big achievements whatever i could <laughs> i could manage to do till then so uh, it's it's i won't say that so most of the time it's just that people don't even know um, how how form, formula rose, racing goes because uh, it's still very unconventional and uh, uh, people need to know more about it so th- there there is a lot to be done especially for racing if we talk about it in in india and uh, would would you and, would you like to describe your car a little bit because uh, you know we know how a football is played we know how cricket is played we see so much of football and cricket on tv but not uh, the formula for racing or i haven't honestly seen your car ah uh, okay so uh, my car it, it's uh, so formula 4 is uh, the body the structure has been a little bit modified the engine is of ford uh, it's a 1600 cc engine and uh, we make it light weight so the body is modified uh, and the weight doesn't goes more than 450 to 480 kg uh, so that has to be standardized across uh, all the drivers who's taking part in the championship so uh, okay so there is another perspective to that so the heavier you are you are making the car more heavy so uh, just to <laughs> make my car lighter and to go a little more faster i have recently lost 25 kg and i'm mm-hmm. still on the way amazing uh, yeah. uh, looking at jyoti's workouts and all that regime i was so so uh, you know impressed i was like okay when should i be able to do all of this okay <laughs> so that's that's one part of my sport i need to be as lighter i can be uh, and uh, um, so so there, there are three uh, tracks in india where we race uh the circuit racing happens only in these three tracks one is in che- uh, coimbatore one is in madras and one is buddh international circuit uh, apart from that uh, okay i'm deviating from the topic a little bit so so that's what about no, no, the car no no please go on <laughs> so that's what yeah, about please the go car on. and yeah and so so the coming back to circuits uh, so we have only three circuit in india and uh, uh we had a recent news also about to buddh international circuit that it won't be functional but uh, i hope that government will sort that out very soon and will be racing on buddh the circuit again uh, apart from that uh, we have these rallies and saloon cars again saloon cars run on the uh, circuit uh, as well so uh, so we have so the longest circuit is buddh international which is somewhere around 5 kilometers and uh, we need to be really really fit when it comes to uh, the longest you know distance that you are going to cover in the quickest lap and uh, it, it's very exhaustive so you need to be fit you need to be lighter you so, so that's the overall crux as in how you have so what's the timing 
What's the timing? Sorry uh, for getting into technicalities, but this is the last technical question I'm going to ask you. What's the timing you're expected to do with your car on the boot mm. circuit? Oh, okay. So, uh, on I have raced the most on Kari. I I uh, uh, so that the track is 2.1 kilometers. The least time that was being made there wa was one minute and nine seconds. The least I could do is one minute and eleven seconds. And okay. uh, two seconds matters a lot <laughs> because I, I, have, I haven't done better than one minute and 11 seconds till now. And in Buddha Circuit, you're supposed to do um, anywhere around two minutes and 18, 19 seconds. I am stuck with two minutes and 22 seconds. Great. I hope your timing improves. And who's, who's really been your uh, idol in the sport? Yeah, so so I I do the circuit racing, but I I was very passionate, or I would say that I have always been following Ken Block. Uh, he does these rallies okay. and Jim Khana and stuff. I I like the way he 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 just you know moves the car and every stunt that he makes, everything that he does with the car. Um, yeah, I'm really passionate about him. What what do you like more, the stunts or the car? <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> Both are the priceless commodity that you can have with you. <laughs> right. Jyoti, coming to you, who's been your uh, footballing icon? Um, my football, so my female footballing icon growing up was Mia Hamm. Um, oh, okay. And uh, my favorite sort of footballer of all time is Francesco Totti. Francesco Totti, and why would yes. that be so? Uh, just something about the finesse which he played. Um, it just touch it football. wasn't look hard. It was just touch football. Just beautiful. Okay. And is that the kind of football that you like? That is the kind you of like football like the Italian way? <laughs> yes, I do. I do. I love the way they play. I love how defensive they are. I love how they play from the back. I like that. And Anju, what about you? Your uh, cricketing icon or someone who you... <laughs> emulated in your growing years um michael bevan of australia i love the ah, way that he uh, okay. used to finish the games make sure that uh, coming in uh, low even if he was batting lower down the order for australia he used to come in and make sure that he uh, scores uh, a boundary of the last ball to get australia to a win so that was a very important uh, feature for me as in my growing up years in fact i was still i, w I had already started playing for india at that time but uh, when Michael Bevan was getting all those victories. And I, and I loved the way that he used to run between the wickets. He converted those ones into twos, twos into threes. And I thought at that time of the game where people were just jogging across for a single, he was uh, sprinting across the turf to come right. back and make it double. So he was one of them. And of course, um, Mark Waugh. I, I liked his uh, touch, finesse, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the skill that he displayed playing uh, through the onside uh, it was marvelous, so beautiful. So these two players are really idolized. But yes, Sachin Tendulkar has uh, been one of those players that uh, has been role model, like Virat Kohli is for today's generation. I think Sachin Tendulkar has been there for all mm -hmm. those people who've been uh, a part of the sport in those growing up years, watching him so very consistent and so very effective. Um, Anjum, I started following women's cricket round about the time you were the cricket captain of India. And one thing I noticed about you is that you're one of those who batted possibly at every position in the team. Correct me if I'm mistaken. What lesson does that give you to bat from number one to number 10? What lesson, what life lesson? lesson? Is, be good enough to stay at one position. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, in the cricketing lesson it was learned that better become uh, more skillful so that you can hold on to one position. And in life's lesson, I think uh, it was practically um, as simply put, as I mentioned earlier as well, that uh, you can be asked to bat anywhere at any point of time and you can only prepare before you get into a contest to make sure what the end result is. The end result is mm -hmm. that the team has to win. Now, in whichever position you bat, the situation will change, the opposition bowling will change, the weather and the timing of your batting will change. So those are uncontrollables. As a player, all my time has to go in very solid preparation so that whichever number of number of the order the order I'm asked to bat, I change my game or I adapt to that situation 
make sure I get the runs for the team and the victory. Because at the end of the day, it's not going to be looked at like, oh, you batted higher up in the order, you're not used to it. Or you batted lower at the order and you're not used to it. The only thing that's looked at when you look, when you sit back after the game is, have you contributed to the team in any way or not? If you have, you make the cut for the next game. If you haven't, you don't. So save your life, save your position, whichever number, and make sure the team wins. Absolutely. And those are very important lessons in life as well. Now, uh, like sports, our lives have come to a pause because of coronavirus. Now, when life is at a pause, what exactly, how are you planning for the road ahead? Is there anything that you're doing in particular that you would like to tell the audience uh, for them to keep in mind that when life is at a pause, this is what you can do and this, these are the things you can cultivate? I think the very first fact that I've noticed is that we are leading our lives in the most simplistic manner. Large part of the population in the world, very simplistic. What you want to eat is there. You're organizing that. How much time you want to spend with yourself, quote unquote, is there. What you want to do at whatever time of the day, it's not dependent on somebody else's time. It's dependent on your own time. So this situation has brought a lot of people back to the basics and leading their lives in the most simplistic manner. How I am actually preparing is if, if I think of the future, which is obviously very, very scary because uh, being anti-social is the new form of being social. Um, I don't know when we'll be able to sit in a room together and laugh or meet around uh, without having to worry about uh, getting affected or getting ill. And the biggest concern is when can we go back to the stadiums, enjoy the sport in the manner in which we have been doing just about 30 days back from today. I think these are very much uh, difficult things that I don't even want to answer right now because for me, for Jyoti, for Mrani, even for you, Rika, and a lot of people who must be joining in today, it's about getting onto the park and being a part of the action. Not sit back and think, when can we be a part of the action? Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps one of the few uh, last cricket matches that were played before the lockdown began, both you and I attended. Do you think about a time when, you know, cricket can resume, sports can resume. At what point would you say round about the time the schools reopen or what is the time? Because, you know, there are leagues across the world that are talk talking yeah. about playing without fans. Is that even, you know, an option to play sport without fans? You know, in, in one side of the story, if I have to say that, yes, sport is, I've always believed that sports is a biggest leveler and a biggest binder. And you need to put sports out onto the park first and foremost for many people to adapt to, uh, to and maybe to see that yes, all is well. Because sport is one thing that everybody identifies with. So I, I feel sport will have to take that first step out of our own comfort zones, of our own houses and say, look, we are out onto the park and everything is normal. It might be a little slow, but we are taking slow strides or slow steps towards what the best possible future should be. But on the other side, if we say that we're also talking about sports people being humans and everyone is susceptible to uh, get, getting uh, infected or getting injured or getting unwell. Mm -hmm. And it's not only the responsibility towards a sport or towards a nation that as an individual mm -hmm. sports person, you think you also have a responsibility towards your family. So you don't want to come back home and carry an infection and infect others. So that's a very, very difficult uh, decision to be, take, to be made right now. But whenever we have the confidence of opening up these borders and opening up the society in general, I think sports will need to take that leap, for, uh, leap uh, and step forward first before anything else to say, look, we are out there and everything is fine. What about uh, you, Jyoti? What are you doing at this time when things are at a, at a pause? Um, well, <laughs> I must say, um, I'm quite an introvert, but I feel of late, I've just been missing my teammates a lot. I, I do play a, a, a team sport and I find, you know, suddenly I'm, I'm just training alone and it's a, it's a different ball game than I can imagine. Are I'm you being able to team. train right now? No football. I do have a ball in my house, which I just randomly, <laughs> you know, walk around with. But um, yeah, I've okay. been keeping fit. 
I think that's important just to keep myself going and, you know, to stay happy. I think just exercising every day uh, is keeping me going. Plus, I feel this lockdown has really got me in touch with the, um, the need for rest and how important that is. Because uh, a lot of us, you mm. know, when we are playing sport, we kind of like, yeah, we do, we'll train, we'll train, we'll train. And then we don't really rest as much. Yeah. And these days, I'm just yeah. getting so much rest. And I do feel great because when I train, I feel like I'm training so much harder, uh, which is great because it yeah. proves that rest is so important. We also know that you're a fitness trainer apart from being a footballer. Are you, are you running fitness training classes on, online these days? <laughs> I am uh, a couple of classes. I'm not doing too many because I'm not really, uh, I don't do a lot of online stuff. But I'm, I'm seeing that, you know, I have to adapt and uh, help people out there, keep them motivated uh, so that, you know, they can, they can stay active as well. Because that's, it just mentally, you're just so much happier if you're active. You don't feel like you're so locked down if you're moving around, just doing a couple of, mm -hmm. you know, exercises at home. Uh, so that's important. And I feel I'm doing a little bit into making a few people happier in their day uh, during the lockdown. Jyoti, one of the things that I feel is that not everyone has to be sporty to play sports. But at the same time, being sporty also means having a sporty sporty mind sporty body that probably helps you function better could you tell us your philosophies on that you know what would you tell a woman of today and how to incorporate you know activities in life so that that you know helps them have a better life a better active life and even a healthy life yeah i mean sport at the end of the day it's movement um it's exercise and whether you want to play a sport or you want to do exercise at home or you want to go for a walk, or you want to, uh, you know, do your household chores. It's all about movement. Human body is made mm -hmm. to move. And I feel that um, any woman or man, whoever it is, I think the baseline is just stay active. Uh, it keeps you healthy. It keeps you happy, you know, release of endorphins. Um, and especially during this time that, you know, a lot of us are just sitting around watching Netflix, uh, and, you know, cooking at the most or like cleaning your house. Mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. think it's also important to uh, use this time. Uh, a lot of us actually don't have the time to exercise when we are working. Mm -hmm. And this is a great time for people who want to take to sort of fitness or exercise mm -hmm. because we have so much time on our hands uh, to give it a try because you may just like it and enjoy it and make it part of your daily life. Um, Mridalini, what about you? What are you doing when you know, life has come to a pause for most of us. My office is running more or less same, but in fact, work from home. So you're working from more home? Work from home. It's actually more work from home. And <laughs> work from home uh, needs a kind of self-discipline and self-drive yes. uh, that, you, that you keep motivating yourself to sit in front of the laptop and keep doing your stuff all the time. Uh, but when it comes to sport, definitely um, uh, my sport already has a very limited uh, uh, option for practice. But yeah, now it's like completely uh, gone. No one can uh, no one can practice for now. So I can only do these fitness sessions while staying at home and watch the racing F1 videos, etc. To keep myself motivated, and I have the mm -hmm. target to lose weight anyway so uh, yeah yes. you, you just mentioned that you've lost 25 kilos and it's not just about losing those kilos but maintaining the momentum now that you are at a pause and every one of us are at a pause how difficult is it to you know keep that momentum going and probably you are also not getting to your car anytime soon no, 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 definitely. It's a little difficult to keep the momentum going. But uh, right now, what I am doing is just my uh, fitness regime. I'm trying to maintain the same thing at the uh, uh, at whatever time I used to do it. And it's just that going to the gym, I'm doing it at home. Nothing much has changed uh, for me when it comes to regular life. But yeah, no mm -hmm. practice sessions, no getting into the car. So that's it. And, and, and does it, as a sports person, does that depresses you at sometimes uh, that you know you're not being able to get to your car you're not being able to use your car the way you would like to because you are an active sports person and that is your life does that you know have I, an impact on you emotionally 
I won't say it depresses me. In fact, I'm getting, you know, more excited. I'm waiting uh, to get in there. Um, as soon as I get in there, I think I'll be the happiest person to just touch my car and start the engine and rev it on <laughs> as soon as I can. I'll have to ask you this question. At what point do you think that your sports can resume and you guys can get back to the tr track? Because what I feel is that it's going to be different for different sports. Perhaps the no non-contact sports can get back a little earlier than the contact sports because it is we are in a pandemic situation. So social distancing is the norm. Perhaps something like yours, which is, uh, I don't know again, whether it would be termed as a non-contact sport in sporting terms, whether that can get back earlier than the rest of it. I, I don't think so, uh, because because everything, all the circuits, and uh, you you people do gather when when you go to race. At least, uh, as Anjum rightly said, you you don't want to infect others, or you don't want to come back and infect anyone at your home. So I would say it's it's, it's a better idea to you know hold on and wait for the government when uh, I think it's gonna open everything in in phases. So uh, and there is uh, there should be a plan B ready for. Uh, I feel that for training and uh, uh, the, this plan should work well, even when the lo lockdown situation is like this. Uh, but actual racing, I don't feel that it will happen. And uh, you, can, you can just maintain your own regime till the time it happens. But yeah, there, there won't be any championships any soon that I can understand. Girls, I'll have to ask you this question because this is something that many people are asking now. Being under lockdown, uh, feels daunting. Uh, Anjum, would you like to take this question that what exactly, yeah. you know, what, how do you cultivate a positive mind space even uh, when you are under lockdown? And this is for, you know, not just for women like me, but for <coughs> mothers, but for, and, and for our mothers, for the doctors, for other health workers, people who are fighting COVID in the front line being in the lockdown and yet remaining positive. How do you do that? And what are the lessons from sports that you can tell them in particular? I think first and foremost, Riga, it's a time where everybody has a lot of time to introspect and spend with themselves. When I said a little while earlier that our lives have come down to the very basic, probably for Jyoti and for me, um, you know, because Lali is a very good uh, worker, so she attends office and she works from home. So I won't include her in this uh, in in this discussion. I'll say for Jyoti and me, for for training, we don't have to look for another uh, window. Ideally, we would want to have our teammates around, but otherwise, individually also we can train. But for a lot of people nowadays, I think it's a lot of time on their hands that they can spend with themselves. The first thing they should identify is what is it that they like to do, be it sleeping be it singing, dancing, jumping around, not doing anything, what, whatever they like to do, I think they should do that. Because as I said earlier, you're not answerable to anyone. Not many people are working just like Nalini is from home. Few of us are working and it's not taking out 24 hours or 12 hours a day. It's taking a very short time. So whatever you love to do, do that. Because that's the only thing that's going to get you back to where you want to be. And that smile on your mm -hmm. face. Because... Once you have that smile on your face, for me, I love to train and I want to train the way I want to do it, whether, I have, whether I'm working or I'm not working. And that's the best feeling I always get in the morning when it's nice and chirpy around, it's nice, cool breeze blowing. I love to go and do my training and then start my day at whatever time uh, the rest of the things need to follow. At least that makes me feel normal. So that's for me. But for the others, they should just follow whether they've been able to do what they've been able to do up till now or not follow your passion, make sure that you're doing it now. Right. Um, we've got questions coming in now. Jyoti, let me ask you uh, this first question from uh, one of our guests today. How can, how can young women approach the challenges to pursue sports as a full-time career, especially with so many social resistances? Um, yeah, so I think sport, if you choose to, you know, take sport up seriously, you want it to be your, your career, um, you have to be prepared to be on a path that's not going to be easy. It's always the harder part. It's always going to be, there are going to be, you know, hurdles along the way. But um, as I said earlier, it's about just sticking to that because that's what you want. 
uh, also you know blocking out the other voices in your head yeah. other people, what other people may say it's about doing being true to yourself if that's what you want you have to stick to it and i tell you if you stick to it there is nothing that can stop you from making it uh, or you know reaching where you want to reach uh, because that's the power of you know dedication and uh, commitment ajub what are your views on disparity in pay between women and men sports people particularly in india today um that's a very uh, hot topic these days uh, especially with a lot of lot of time to discuss that i think that parity obviously nobody likes that parity even i don't like it why should it be there but if i have to see and look back about 10 years back or 5 years back where um you know there were not even contracts when very many players were not paid uh, three decades back or uh, two decades back players were not even paid for playing for india to today where they have uh, a decent amount of earning i think uh, it's just climbing the ladder and going forward uh, by the minute and by every tournament india is playing in so that's that's very much improving to say that it should be at par with men i think in totality if we look at the bigger picture and i think we are smart enough today to understand um the, it, it's better to get a 50 lakh contract than nothing at all or probably when i played i got a lakh of rupees for the entire series now this they get that's just for one match so either you look at the brighter side of it or say let's say if men are getting doubly uh, paid for their contracts i think they they want it they want the the one world cups not one not two but three of them so i think they deserve uh, that uh, kind of amount that they get paid from the cricket board but for the women it's the brighter side if the men can win a world cup and get that kind of uh, a pay packet the women can do it much easily because now you don't have to wait for 10 years or 20 years to reach there it's just a tournament away right thank you very very much anjum for joining us on the show today with thank that you. i'll let you go because i know you have thank other you. commitments stay well stay safe and we'll see you, you on so the much. other side thank you very much rika and thank you very much to everyone well we'll continue our uh, discussion with uh, jyoti and uh, with pranalini uh, now um, jyoti we were meant to have had the under 17 football world cup in india later this year uh, which is now postponed will will this the, the publicity that has already began and all the talk that had already begun help indian football get to a level once uh, indian women's football get to a level once once things resume uh, most definitely i think this under 17 world cup was going to be huge for us and it will still be huge uh, whenever it does happen I think it's going to be an eye opener because I think so many people uh, in India still don't uh, realize how well our Indian women play football, and um, this will sort of be a showcase almost for uh, our country for them to, to really open their eyes and see uh, the level of football that these under 17 girls are playing um, because I've seen them play and they are fantastic. So. i'm just waiting for the tournament to finally happen and for people to just sit back and say wow like we had no idea that these girls can play so well and it's really going to change things for women's football right mrinalini what are your thoughts on lack of professional sports for women uh, do you think it's a mindset it's a problem in mindset or uh, institutional lapses it's i would say uh, both goes in parallel hand in hand so uh, we we definitely need to understand that yeah men and women are uh, different very different so uh, when it comes to my sport as of now we do not even have a separate category as such uh, uh, but there there is a series which uh, uh, which has been launched which is called w series and which has started and it's only for women so i feel that 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 the things are you know um, changing and uh, um also we need to keep working on it and uh, and and we should not in fact talk about the the these are the women who are playing and these are the men who are play, playing yeah definitely men has already got enough attention of uh, uh, like like cricket or football uh, i would say that it's a mind block and uh, it should be removed or it gradually will uh, you know get equalized for men and women all together uh, with time Mm-hmm. Uh, Jyoti, would you say that sports um, 
as uh, a discipline can be used uh, to empower women uh, can be used as a tool for women empowerment 100% uh, i think uh, sport brings women out of the homes um a lot of people a lot of girls who are playing sport are actually you know traveling out of their homes to to come to places to play they meet people they changes their mindset uh, i think it's so important for you know women to take that step um it's also about you know going back home and answering people who ask you why you playing sport it's about mm-hmm. these girls who then have have the the um, sort of confidence to say confidence, well i'm playing yeah. yeah i'm playing because i want to play and no one's going to stop me and that's huge because uh, that's something they're getting through their sport right and uh, if you could give just one reason uh, that why girls should uh, play sport what would it be in context um, of joining the labor okay so one one thing would be um okay this it's hard to just pick one but uh, for me it would definitely be uh learning to uh there's so many but i would say okay it would be learning to deal with failure i think in a workspace you always uh that there, there days when you're not it's not going to go well for you there days when you know it's you're going to be faced with a lot of hurdles and i think sport teaches you to just carry on no matter what and i think if you transfer that to uh you know any sort of uh, job uh, setting it's the same women who play sport just don't give up and uh-huh. because they know it's just about it's just a small hurdle and they're going to get past it and uh, that comes through very strongly when women are playing are you know working as well right amrudalini there is a question for you as well from one of our viewers uh, what is the greatest lesson that the race car driving has taught you ah uh, it has taught me to look at the minute details uh, of 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 for example you you look at when you're going to start something you you just need to be ready for to when you're going out there you need to be ready to give it a best shot because it, it's just the fraction of time that that you that all you are being prepared preparing for you're getting ready for it gets just finishes off in 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 a minute so you look after the minute details you get ready uh, you keep working for it and you have to be very focused so you gather all your courage or, and all the uh, you know hard work that you have been doing it and you 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 just show it in a minute so you have to be very uh, cautious of everything that is going in and around you so you become uh, a, a a very uh, you know uh, you look at each and every minute details that's happening around you you become aware of the situation so uh, and it teaches you right. how to take risk you become a risk taker than being a, a risk averse first person in, in in any field for that matter girls you've been truly incredible champions in your own field before i let you go i'll have to ask you this question and i'll start uh, with jyoti what is the kind of uh, suggestion you would like to give our viewers uh, tonight uh, to help bring more girls to the fields to the parks to the rings to empower them and you know make them uh, build them into better women of tomorrow i would just say uh, firstly to all parents um don't stop your girls from going out and playing uh, you don't know how happy they are when they are playing with other women and other girls and it's just i love seeing some of these girls who come from various places they travel hours and they they meet us in the field and they're just so happy to be there so i think denying that, them that sort of pleasure um, whether it's one hour or two hours in a day is it's uh, it's sinful so don't stop any girls from playing for any any sport for that matter uh and apart from that if any girls are out there you know on the brink of wanting to start sport i would definitely say do it it will change your life you will never be bored again um and you know you're just going to grow in confidence and happiness and uh, yeah you're going to make a lot of friends as well what about uh, you mrinalini how would you answer that question i would say uh, every every person should do one thing that they have always wanted to do in life if they have not given it a shot 
go just give it a shot at least once because there are always things that you have to do to just uh, live and eat and uh, you know finish your daily routine and but but you at the many times that you end up just doing those things and you don't you don't do what you have actually wanted to do and that makes you happy and uh, once you give it a chance you get to know that what actually it it brings out a different person altogether when you do it you're so happy doing it so just just go and give it a shot that's all you know one thing i have heard from um, my idols my elders if you follow your passion money is going to follow you no matter what there will be struggles you will fall but you will also get up to be able to follow your passion you guys have been incredible tonight thank you very much for joining us on the show a big vote of thanks uh, to american center and for the women in labor team for organizing uh, this chat uh, with these incredible girls and also uh, the wild city production thank you very much for having us all thank you very much thank you brilliant excellent this is good wonderful yes. thank you so much <laughs> just hey, jyoti hi i never get got a chance to say hi to you <laughs> i am really very much inspired by the way you work out and